Hello again, everybody. Welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. My name is Mike Thompson, and this is the Private Pilot Ground School course. Now, Epic offers this Private Pilot Ground School course in three parts. The first part is the online ground school course in Schoology. The second part are these videos that parallel that online content. And then the third part is for you to sit down with your flight instructor one-on-one -on -one and review this content. So please don't just watch these videos. To get all of the necessary knowledge and background that you need, you're going to have to do all three parts. Well, what is our topic today? Private Pilot Ground School course today, we're talking about advisory circulars, or the FAA commonly calls these the ACs for short. Advisory circulars, what are they? Well, exactly as the name implies, it's widely circulated advice. What kind of advice? What do we mean? Advisory circulars are informational documents produced by the Federal Aviation Administration to guide institutions and individuals within the aviation industry as well as the general public. It is the FAA saying to me, hey Mike, here is a recommended way to comply with the FARs. Now, do I need to do it the way that they advise? Mm, not necessarily. But let's think about it. I'm taking advice from someone who knows the content really well. If I was to go home tonight and make tacos, I would say to myself, hey, you know what? I'm not that good really at making tacos. I know what the ingredients are, but my buddy down the street, he and his wife are excellent at making tacos. Let me go get advice from an expert. Now, I don't have to take their advice, advice but I probably will. That's how we think about advisory circulars. This is advice from experts. So it makes sense to take that advice. So they're not mandatory. Notice in the title it says advisory. Well, advice is not mandatory. So are these, are these mandatory? Are they regulatory? No, they're not. They're strictly voluntary. But it makes sense to follow good advice. How are advisory circulars numbered? How do I keep track of them? What does the numbering system look like? Well, you can see on this graphic behind me, the advisory circulars are numbered generally by FARs. So notice here it says 20 aircraft and then it lists a series of FARs under Advisory Circular Area 20. So all of these have to do with aircraft and any advisory circular um, on one of these topics will begin with a 20. Look on this graphic. Notice, for example, 60. This has to do with <clears throat> airmen and airman certification. 70 has to do with airspace. Uh, 90 has to do with air traffic and general operating rules. So if I have uh, an advisory circular that has to do with flight rules or approach procedures or security control of air traffic or ultralight vehicles, you can see on this graphic, those would all be addressed under an advisory circular that started with 90. 120, for example. These are advisory circulars dealing with air carriers, air travel clubs, and etc. Let's take a look at an example. This graphic shows the title for an advisory circular that's talking about the pilot's role in 
collision avoidance. Now this has a lot to do with FAR 91. Notice the advisory circular starts with a 90. The next number after the hyphen is the advisory circular's number, in this case 48. And this is the fourth iteration of that advisory circular. How do I know? By the letter D as in delta. So 9048 D. This is the fourth iteration. And this iteration actually has had a change already. So looking at the entire title, I see the subject is the pilot's role in collision avoidance. I see the date that it was sent out. And I see the AC number 90-48 delta and it is change one. Then we get into the purpose and we start reading the rest of the advisory circular. Moving on, we see, for example, 140. This talks about schools and other certificated agencies. 150 is the airport series. Here I'll find things uh, that talk about um, aircraft fire and rescue, um, airport design and construction, airport improvement programs, lighting, planning, etc. So if I was interested in finding a specific advisory circular, how exactly would I go about doing that? Well, I'm here to tell you, if you can think of a topic related to aviation, airports or airplanes or pilots, I'll bet you it's highly likely there has been an advisory circular written about it. If I'd like to find it, I'm going to go to the FAA's website, that is FAA.gov. This is a graphic of the FAA website where I would search for advisory circulars. Notice in the search bar right here, I could search by content, number, title, or description. And notice on the drop down, I could even subscribe to a particular series of advisory circulars if I so desired. So folks, that's a little bit of background on the advisory circular system. We hope that was helpful. Come back and join us for the next lesson. We'll see you next time.